What's up, sports fans? Welcome back to another episode of Pez's Picks. Like I always say, I am not Pez. I am not the man making the picks. The guy to my left, if you're watching us on YouTube, or the other guy, the other voice you're going to hear on the podcast, that is Pez. Pez, how's it going? Doing great, Jeff. We're off and running, 10-2 and two in the last two weeks. Uh, we're, we're feeling good. We're feeling like the algorithm, our system's clicking, and looking forward to another big week here. Yeah, and I titled this podcast Riding the Hot Hand. Let's see if we can keep it going. Another great week of picks last week. Uh, you finished two, uh, two and one in the NCAA and two, two and oh in the NFL. You remain undefeated the last two weeks in the NFL. We'll talk about all that. Let's start last week looking at the National Football League. You had the Falcons at Cardinals, Cardinals getting one and a half, Kyler Murray's debut for the season. It was dicey at times, but nonetheless, the Cardinals come out with the win straight up, making you look like a genius, Pez. Well, appreciate it, Jeff. Uh, the defense for Arizona, I think their stats were, were a little bit of a lie about that team. They played hard all year. I haven't had a, an NFL quarterback, really, with, with the proper coaching and practice time. So Murray looked a little rusty first half. Fourth quarter, he turned into the Murray that we, we expected him to be. The defense was great. And and that's a big win for us. And ho- hoping that team does well. I like Arizona when they're winning. It's a fun stadium and a fun state. My wife went to college out there, so I'm uh, I'm contracted to say Arizona's great. And and we're gonna, <laughs> we're going to take a look at that team in the coming weeks. I think they got some some play left in them. Yeah. So I mean, the Arizona Cardinals. Like I said, that's a game that a lot of people might have avoided. Nonetheless, the Falcons had to go back to Desmond Ritter because of an injury to Taylor Heineke and Kyler Murray gets the job done. The other pick that you had last week in the National Football League was the hey, it's game that I covered. The Pittsburgh Steelers hosting the Green Bay Packers, Jordan Love and company coming to Akershire Stadium. It looked dicey at the end, Pez, but they hold on. The Steelers hold on to a four-point lead thanks to a Patrick Peterson blocked extra point. Therefore, they cover the three-point spread and you win. Well, I, I think this season, I, I read this week, Jeff, 70%, 80% of the games have been decided by seven points or less. Wow. Uh, a, a tough gambling year. I think five points, uh, five games on Sunday were decided by last-second field goals. Yep. So it, it, that, that makes it tight, and there are a lot of close finishes, and uh, I think that game ended up how it should. Pittsburgh defense played great. Couple turnovers. I think they had two in that game. Am I right about that, Jeff? Less. Yes, sales. they had two interceptions, two key interceptions in the end zone. Actually, yeah. So, and and you know that's the name of the game. When you're throwing picks, you're you're barely gonna, you know, you're gonna struggle to cover in this league. And and I like the Steelers. I like how they're rolling. And we're gonna be talking about them in a few minutes too. Yeah, absolutely. So then we go to the NCAA slate of games. You only lost one. Let's get that out of the way first. You thought Georgia Tech getting 14 and a half on the road to Clemson could get the job done, and Clemson just blows their doors off. That was a surprise, was it not? Well, you know what? We got close to a backdoor cover. Backdoor yep. cover, Jeff, is is when a team covers in garbage time. Uh, Georgia Tech's quarterback had the worst game of his, his career through four picks and came within a score of, of getting it done. Came alive a little bit in the fourth quarter. I think the pressure hit Georgia Tech a little bit. And uh, poor quarterback. Uh, we're, to, we're to watch him. I like him a lot. I think that's guys. We're going to hear that name going forward in the coming years. And we looked at him this week. We're going to give him a week off. But Georgia Tech might be a, a play we're, we're in the next few weeks. We'll see around bowl season. Well, and, and Clemson has just been so sporadic this year. I mean, they, they've been up and down. We bet them a couple times uh, sure. this season already. And they've never pulled through. So you're thinking, okay, this team's having a down year. Dabo Sweeney's getting drugged through the mud by the media and the fan base and the alumni. And then he comes up with a big win. So what do you know? That's college, right? Sure is. And and when you throw four picks to be within a score of covering, I mean, I, I like Georgia Tech. They never gave up in that game. And, and yeah. I think Clemson got a little lucky, to be honest with you. You don't usually have a starting quarterback with four picks that's on a good season. And, but it happens, like you said, in college. Who knows? Maybe – Maybe George Tech had a big party the week before. We don't know about it. You never know. <laughs> Maybe we'll find out about it. But, hey, you, you, you rebounded. The other two games that you picked for the NCAA slate came through in a big way. Alabama giving 10.5 at Kentucky SEC matchup. Alabama rolls, and they look like a team that's threatening to be in that top four by the end of the season. I mean, that they look like the Alabama that they always look like. Uh, another great game from the quarterback. Defense is playing great. Um, I think Washington's feeling the heat. Washington undefeated, five, uh, 
sitting at number five. And, and I think all those teams in the top five right now are feeling the heat. One of them loses Alabama is probably jumping in there is my guess. And every, everybody knows that. And we'll see who's got, who's got the, the guts to finish off the season in that top five. But I, I, I'd be shocked if Alabama wasn't in that top four. I really would. The way they're playing right now, they're, they're playing some tough football. Which, I mean, think about where they started the season. Like, they didn't look good. They didn't look like the typical Alabama. And even you mentioned on this podcast before, it just doesn't seem like a Nick Saban coach team. I can't say that now. They seem to have rebounded and gotten their act together. So, Alabama, that might be a team we think about moving forward. Absolutely. Coaching there is as good as you're going to get at the college level. I mean, they probably have a better coaching staff than half the pro teams right now. And, and it shows. I mean, the team's yeah. better quarterbacks better and there's no panic in that team and i mean that that that's a winner and we are going to look at them and we're going to give them a week off this week but but going forward that's a team to, to watch now a, a team that you didn't give a week off but for the wrong direction you took michigan over penn state michigan giving four and a half penn state another flat line performance against a big time opponent and that seems to be the james franklin moniker so to speak that's everyone's going after him now because his great record is is fantastic except when he's playing top 10 teams or even ranked opponents you're not a big believer in penn state and that's going to show up this week but what are your thoughts on that michigan game i watched that game i mean it was what we thought it was to be it looked like the ohio state game uh pretty much the same game and you know penn state's got a decent defense and michigan's defense obviously is great they just couldn't they couldn't move the ball fired the offensive coordinator on sunday penn state smells like a little bit of a panic zone for me they fired the offensive coordinator this week they have two assistants that are running the offense each taking turns running the plays oh my gosh uh, uh sounds like to me a little bit of a disaster they're bringing in a, a they have a grad assistant they they bumped up to quarterback coach i mean that's not even a paid guy grad assistant i was a grad assistant jeff at Rutgers. we got one dollar a year so not a big salary <laughs> uh, we'll be talking about them in a minute or two. My gosh. So you're saying that th that screams panic moves. That screams like panic moves. Uh, I That's think awful. he knows his, his days are numbered at Penn state teams pick up on that, especially college kids, college kids on good programs. You look at your coach as a, as a relative, as a father figure. I don't know if you caught the interview, Michigan. I, I can't remember his name right now interim coach that that coach that team Michigan yeah on i did see it i don't know his name though yeah i saw Be it. best post game interview i ever seen guy cried he dropped a couple f-bombs he, he said he loved the guys <laughs> michigan is rolling and and uh i think that i i actually think harbaugh not being there hurt them a little bit the offense was a little more conservative than i think they usually would be but but they pulled it out and and that was a fun one and you know we like winners and Pez's picks so that was a big w so to recap last week Five total picks, four winners out of five. That's fantastic. So looking into this week, well, let's go back to where you were last week. You were six, eight, and one leading into this is just during the podcast with college picks. You were 24, 16, and one in the NFL all season. I do have to ask about the bonus pick. Did you check in on the English Premier League, Chelsea and Man City? Holy moly, we got screwed in that one, Jeff. Four, <laughs> four to four. They call it a draw over there to europe when you gamble in europe it's a weird thing you, in ireland and england you walk into these shops one's called pen rods i can't remember the other one you walk up it's like betting on a horse in, in america but when you walk up you write your bet down on a piece of paper and uh -huh. you hand it to the person whatever you write is what you're betting so if you write win and the team doesn't win but they advance in a tournament on penalty kicks you don't win your bet it's craziness over in Europe. I'm chalking it up to that. I don't know what I was thinking. The sun goes down at a different time. Four to four. We got screwed on a penalty kick in, in garbage time, what they call injury time with a minute left. I think we got boned in that one, Jeff, but that's all right. You're a soccer guy. That's what I hate about soccer. Why can't they just stop the clock? Like the injury time. It's this. It's like this fictitious time that no one really knows how much time is left. And so they're running around playing the game. And How much time do we have left? I mean, to me, that takes a lot of excitement out of the game. Think about in hockey where the clock's running down. You got to get a couple shots off. You pull your goalie. That's exciting. I don't know. It's one of the many things I don't like about soccer. That's why they call it the beautiful game, Jeff. We're, oh. we're still figuring out why. <laughs> I could think of other things to call it. Okay. Let's let's focus on this week's of picks. You, you went two and three. Now, last week you did three NCAA, two NFL. This week you're doing two NCAA, three NFL games. We're going to start off with the college picks. 
Again, after last week, you're eight, nine, and one, slowly creeping up to 500. I like the way we're trending. And you like to, let's talk about this Rutgers game first. Rutgers at Penn State, since we just got done talking about Penn State, and you are not a fan of the Nittany Lions. You're not a believer in what they're doing. Knee-jerk reactions going crazy in terms of the coaching staff, like we mentioned. Rutgers is getting 21 points at Penn State, and you like Rutgers in Happy Valley to cover. Jeff, we're going to take that number all day. Uh, Rutgers, we, we took them... We bet against them a couple weeks ago against Ohio mm-hmm. State. That's Into right. the third quarter, Rutgers looked like they might win that game outright. Had a little bit of turnover in mid-third quarter, but physically they were equal to Ohio State, and, and we were worried here at Pez's Picks. Uh, had, to, had to go out and do some laps around the block. My heart was beating. I think Rutgers <laughs> is better uh, than their record. I think their defense is going to stand up. Both offenses are pretty poor. Penn State can't throw the ball down the field. Rutgers struggles a little bit moving the ball. I think it's going to be a close one. And I, I wouldn't be shocked if Rutgers pulls this one out outright. Anybody wants to be a real gambler? Real gambler right now. The the money line on that game, Rutgers is a plus 845. I'm not wow. going to say that's my pick, but that's a you put ten dollars on that game, you're winning eighty four fifty. You put a hundred dollars on that game, you're winning eight hundred and forty five dollars. So if you're a gambler and, and you like the Scarlet Knights, I went there, Jeff. I, I like RU. Uh, I know I bashed them a little bit, but their defense is legit this year. Shiano, highest paid employee for the New Jersey government. I think he's going to he's gonna earn that money this week and get them into a good ball. They'd be 7-4. and four. Uh, Penn State, team's firing their coordinator. When you tell me you're bringing two guys in to run the offense and call plays and you're looking for another guy, I don't think the players have confidence in that. Um, when, anytime I felt like my coach wasn't confident, I knew me and my players, we, we probably weren't playing too well for that game. So I love Rutgers this week, and and I think Penn State's going to be going to be scratching their heads. Might, might be looking for a new head coach after this week is my call. Well, let's take a quick sidebar, and I want to ask you about coaching changes. In the NFL, when the Las Vegas Raiders fired Josh McDaniels, they bring in Antonio Pierce. A lot of people said, this is your pick. Like, take these guys because they're going to rally around this coach. And I believe that – did we take them after that? I can't remember if we did or not. I don't think we did. Uh, we didn't. Um, well, I think in the NFL, when you lose a coach, it's usually because the players don't like them. Okay. And, and everybody's an employee in the NFL, right? So right. your stars don't like them. Uh, I, I looked into what, what happened. Uh, there was an argument about the New England Patriots. Pierce yeah. got up. And, and, and you know, so – you're not going to have that in college. In college, there's a different discipline. There's a different respect. Players look up to these guys. Uh, you got coaches that brought guys out of bad neighborhoods sometimes or changed their life, give them a scholarship. So there's a lot more emotion when you lo- lose a coach in college, especially at a Penn State. Um, they breed family in that, that, that uh, institution, and I think there are a lot of players scratching their heads. And I wonder if they're worried about transfers in, in the portal, and I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Well, do, do you think well, the coaching changes – could make positive results for Penn state. Like how do you handle that situation? Because like I said, in the NFL, you mentioned it, it's a different, it's a totally different game in terms of how the organizations function. But there's people that said the lock of the week is anytime in the NFL, a coach gets fired, especially if they're not liked by their team and they hire someone else. Think about Jeff Saturday at Indianapolis when they, he won his first game when he got hired out of the blue by the Colts. Do you think that that's that could also follow suit and maybe could these new coaches have a new philosophy and maybe get some more offensive production from Penn State I I don't think so you know with with the pros uh, with the NFL I don't buy into that always either at the end of the season when they fire a coach usually that team loses that coming week Uh, mid-season you know in certain situations the NFL you can get an advantage out of that but in the pro game Drew Aller quarterback for Penn State offensive coordinator gets fired He's probably not walking around feeling too confident this week. Yeah, I, I don't think he hit a pass longer than ten yards last week. I think he's averaging six pa- six yards a pass, one of the worst in the Big Ten. I, I don't think this is a uh, something that that's going to make him feel better going into this game against a really tough defense and, and something to prove. Rutgers still playing for something. Penn State had dreams of, of national championships. They're gone. Their their chances of getting top four are gone. I think yeah. Rutgers still has a lot to play for in Penn State. They don't. They do not. And and yeah. I, I I don't like that move firing that offensive coordinator. I just don't. 
Penn State's going bowling, but it's not going to be where they want, like you said. And so yeah. there, there's a lot of letdown there. But let's talk about this other game. This line is, and we talked about this before we went on the air. It doesn't make much sense to me. So here you have the Washington Huskies going to Oregon State again. We're talking about uh, Pac-12, Big 12 here. Oregon State, not a bad team, but Washington, they have a great quarterback. They've won some big games over teams like Oregon. They're getting two points on the road. Pez, what's going on here? But you like the Washington Huskies here. Well, Jeff, you know, there's some rules in the gambling world. Uh, and Pez's picks, we're a collaborative organization. We got scouts. We got gamblers all over the country. Uh, most guys I'm talking to, they're telling me that I'm right about my worry. My, my worry is Washington getting two is a little bit of a sucker bet. Sucker bet meaning uh, you, you look at that line, you think, oh, wow, how could, how could Washington – 17 straight wins undefeated. How could they be getting two points? I, I'm going with Washington. Quarterbacks may be the best in the country right now. It opened as a pick. That line has moved to two. There's some the, some hype behind Oregon State, and, and they're, home, uh, they're playing home this week. The stats that jump out to me, we got the number one passing game in the country with Mike, Pen- Mike Penix Jr. of Washington, 28 TDs, 3,500 yards. Number 71 defense against the pass for Oregon State. They're giving up 230 a game. I, I don't think that line's accurate. Um, maybe, maybe maybe the home team and maybe 17 games in a row is, is pushing people to think Washington's got to lose one of them. Going up against the fifth-ranked team this season, uh, third in a row for Washington. So they've had a tough schedule. I mean, that, they might have had tough schedule in the country. Five-ranked teams, three in a row. I think the team's on a mission. They know their schedule. It's turned into a war. It's us against them. And I, I like teams like that. They know they've won 17 in a row. There's a lot of talk about Washington's coach leaving this week. I think he's 22-2 and two since he's been there. So maybe, maybe there's some chatter. Uh, I like Oregon State a little bit, but Washington State has way more weapons. Last week, Penix put up 332 touchdowns against a great defense in Utah. So I – I think Utah's defense is better than Oregon. Washington should put up just as much, if not more. And I don't think anybody's stopping Mike Penix this year. I just don't. Yeah, I don't follow college football that close, but even this line, like you said, sucker, sucker came out. Of, I was like, Man, it looks like it. Line. That's a weird one. We're, yeah. we're sticking with it, though. Okay. Uh, Washington. I think Washington jumps into that top four. I really do. And I, I think that's a team that could compete for a national championship with that offense. I mean, that kid's a great player. And, I wonder who's going to get him in the draft, and I, I'd, I'd like to see him in, in the league. And I think he's a little bit of a C.J. Stroud type of guy. He's got a great arm and confident, smart kid. So we'll see. There you go. Okay, so there are your two picks, Washington plus two at Oregon State and Rutgers plus 21 in Happy Valley at Penn State. Let's go to the National Football League. We're talking about tonight, Thursday night football. That's right, the Bengals and Ravens. I'm going to be watching this one very closely as a Steelers fan. The Bengals coming off, both these teams actually coming off of last-second losses last week. C.J. Stroud, who you just mentioned, in the Houston Texans going to Cincinnati and win. And then the Deshaun Watson led, we'll talk about the Browns here shortly, uh, go into Baltimore and beat Baltimore. This game is also at M&T Bank Stadium. The Ravens are giving three and a half. You say take the home team. Love the Ravens, Jeff. Um, I think the Bengals... They've played better the last few weeks. I think that team still has some holes. Uh, Joe Burrow seems to be a turnover machine during pressure time. I think he had two picks again last week. Lamar Jackson, 7-1 and one against Cincinnati in his career. Uh, he threw two picks last week. I don't think Lamar Jackson at home is losing two in a row and having two bad games. His season this year looks like he's a Lamar from a few years ago. In his career, he's got 12 TDs to four picks against the Bengals. Bengals defense, one of the worst in the league, 26 against the pass, 30th against the run. I think the Ravens are going to muscle the ball down the field, and, and Lamar is going to have a big, big day. Uh, Baltimore, number one rushing offense, averaging 155 yards a game, second best defense in the league, only only allowing 15 points a game. And Joe Burrow comes in to, against the Ravens, 3-3 three and three in his career against the Ravens. Uh, guys put up some picks against them and uh, has one of the worst rushing support games in the league. Bengals only running 74 yards a game. You make a team one-dimensional, especially a big division game against a physical Ravens team, Joe Burrow's going to have to throw that ball a lot. I'm going to go with the Ravens and Lamar in this one, and, and I like them a lot. Well, here's a couple other things. Uh, the pass rusher Hendrickson's probably not going to play. If he does, he's not going to be effective. 
after yep. he had a knee, I think a hyperextension. T. Higgins, the wide receiver for the Bengals, has been ruled out with a hamstring injury. So that's one of their elite weapons on the outside that's not going to be able to play. And when in doubt, take the home team on Thursday night football, right? I mean, the team that has to travel on a short week, that is tough. Like, I, I, I get why you're thinking the Ravens right now. Sure. You know, the Ravens, I mean, that that's a tough place to play. Baltimore, yeah. they usually they, they they play well, and you know they lost a close one last week. But imagine you play that game Cincinnati on Sunday, you go to bed, you get up Monday to do some sort of walkthrough. You're back on the road Wednesday. You yeah. don't have any time to recover. The injuries are getting thrown in. You got guys that maybe are stepping up, playing a starting role for the first time. They don't have much practice time. I love the Ravens. I think they're gonna they're gonna win this one big. I think. Okay. All right. I wouldn't be shocked at all. Let's go to the next game. Hey, my Pittsburgh Steelers. Another AFC North grudge match against the Cleveland Browns. This one is going to be interesting to talk about based on the fact that if you're listening to this Thursday morning in whatever book you go to, if you still see the spread of the Steelers getting two points, Pez, you're saying you might want to grab that as quickly as possible. Am I right? Jeff, we grabbed it today, and the Steelers were still getting two and a half in, uh, in the morning. This is Wednesday morning since you know we're recording Wednesday night. Um, I hope everybody jumps on as quickly as possible. Steelers, six and three against the spread going up against uh, Deshaun Les Browns. Browns are going to have P.J. Walker. Or they might have shuffled that around, and they're going to play their rookie. Both of them are turnover machines. Both of them throw picks left and right. And, and like we've been talking about a lot this season, the advantage that we're looking for this year is betting against bad quarterbacks and quarterbacks without experience. And, and I think in this game, it's, it's clearly something that we're going we're gonna to look to expose. And uh, Going in against the Steelers as a rookie, in a big game, I, I, I don't like a rookie quarterback in that situation. I think now the Steelers are plus 10 turnover ratio, yes. if I'm correct. That is that's correct. number. That's a number that I love. Uh, I have a rule. I bet the Steelers, when they're rolling, two wins in a row. Tomlin seems to have that, that team playing and believing in themselves. And, and I, I love the Steelers this week. They're, they're a team that has confidence, and, and uh, this is a big game for them. Yeah. Um, Steelers, though, second in the league, I think, right now, six and three against the spread. Uh, I like that a lot as well. And and they they look like a seven to three against the spread team to me. They, they're a balanced team, and the defense is looking better than than they were in the beginning of the year. And I love that turnover ratio. They're ball hawks. Well, they're ball hawks, and but how they get a plus ten differential is that Kenny Pickett's not turning it over either. So when That's you're for, for using the Pez formula, Kenny Pickett, you would say like, hey. Good quarterbacks, he's not going to be listed in that group. However, he's not making the huge mistake that is breaking the back of the team, whereas yeah. they're going to be going up against, like you said, two quarterbacks who have a knack for throwing interceptions. The Steelers take the ball away. Sure. I think in terms of the Pez's formula and the Steelers getting points on the road, this seems like a slam dunk to me. I, I love it. And think about the Browns. That defense has played great this year, but they've had all the pressure on them. They held the team together. Deshaun comes back. Great game from him last week. They lose him. I, I think that is a moment where defense, I mean, the, the team's got to have a little bit of a letdown. I mean, that's a crushing blow. They got that guy. Looked like he was coming back to what his form was from two or three years ago. And and that's a big, big injury for them. I, I, I don't see the Browns coming, showing up and playing 100%. I just don't. And if you take away the the game against Arizona where they shut out a, a team with no quarterback, uh, they've been giving up more points than you would think. And you go back sure. to the Indianapolis game, they gave up, I think, 38 in that game, even though they That's won. So they have been giving up some points. Like I said, I don't count the Arizona game based on the fact that Arizona had no quarterback. So you like the Steelers plus two. If you can still get it, That's gonna. I guarantee you that line's going to shift quickly. So if you can get it, grab it. All right, let's go to the last NFL game. You've got the Las Vegas Raiders at the Miami Dolphins. Miami Dolphins are coming off of a bye week. The Raiders somehow, some way, have won back-to-back -back games with Antonio Pierce at the helm. Miami's giving 12 points. You said doesn't matter. Take the Dolphins. Love Miami in this one. Uh, long commute for the Raiders coming across country. He got the number one passing game and scoring game for Miami. They're averaging 31 a game. I don't think the Raiders can keep up with a 31-point uh, uh, average team. Raiders can't stop the run. They're giving up 135 yards a game. Miami comes in second-best running game in the league, averaging 148 a game. I, I love Tua. I love the running game. Looks like uh, Devon Chain's coming back off the IR. Mosert, they sat out. He's listed right now. 
I did a little research. It looks like they just gave him a little bit of rest this week, and they had to put him on as questionable. But Mostert looks like he's going to be playing. you got a two-punch running back system. You've got Tyreek. Uh, rookie Aiden O'Connell, I don't think he's up to the challenge to keep up with Tua Tyreek in that run game. I just don't. And and the Raiders are the Raiders. They are decent at home, but we're going to go with Miami lane 12. I'm not worried about that one bit. Well, what does Miami do against subpar competition? They blow them out. They they, they, sure they struggle do. against good teams. The Raiders are not a good team, especially with Aiden O'Connell, a quarterback. I think this is a this is a smart pick. I really like this pick. I love him, and uh, I love that. Give that coach two weeks to to prepare for this game, and he's an analytical guy. He's a he's like a Nick Sirianni guy, and mm-hmm. uh, I, 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 after two big wins with the fire of the coach, there's got to be an effect. I mean, the NFL is based on the head coach and the coaching system. So, when they got a little boost with Pierce, I don't know if Pierce is ready to be a head coach. We'll find out this week, but yeah. I, I have suspicions that that they're going to be a letdown. This is a tough team to prepare against. I don't know how you prepare against Miami. I mean, I got to, I got to think of the Eagles doing the best job against them, but yeah, but that's a tough offense to stop, especially with the healthy run game that they have now. Absolutely. Absolutely. There you have the three NFL picks Thursday night football, take the Ravens giving three and a half on Sunday Steelers getting two at the Browns, take the Steelers. And then the Raiders, Miami, Miami's giving 12, take the Miami dolphins measure up to 26, 16 and one in the nfl that's a fantastic fantastic stat line if you're listening to this podcast you should be taking note of that you should be proud of that too we're happy jeff i think we're up to almost 62 63 percent win in the nfl and and that's about as good as as you're getting this year tight games it's been a tough gambling year uh we're just we're gonna keep looking to expose weaker quarterbacks quarterbacks don't deserve to be in the league and and we're gonna keep running with this and i'm feeling good about this week Got a big NFL week coming next week. We've got some NCAA yes. championship games. So we're looking to have another big one going going undefeated and rolling into Turkey Day with, with some momentum and, and some extra money in the pocket. Tur- oh, yeah. Turkeys. My, my wife bought two turkeys, Jeff. We're, we're enjoying the winnings here. Came home with a, with so much groceries. My, I think I had to give my kid, my 10-year-old, some steroids carry in those turkeys. So we're, <laughs> we're having some fun. Hey, do we have a bonus pick this week? I didn't even ask you. No bonus pick this week, Jeff. We haven't been hot with those bonus picks. We're going we're to give them a week to simmer. <laughs> we're looking at some soccer, some golf, starting to go. look at some hockey plays. You know hockey, you got to give them a few weeks to kind of settle in, and next week we'll be back with a fun one, I think. There you go. Good stuff as always. So check out all of Pez's picks wherever you get your podcast. You can check us out on YouTube. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, you can also get us on any podcast, Apple, Apple Podcast, Spotify, you name it. Pez, any final thoughts? Let's go, Birds. Uh, tough one with Andy Reid this week. A little repeat of the Super Bowl. I don't want to put any extra pressure on them. I know the players listen to the podcast, Jeff. They're big fans of it. So <laughs> I don't want to pressure them going out there. I like the Birds, but I'm afraid of Andy Reid. Guy's a genius when you give him time. So I, I think Birds. I'm, I'm, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. We're, 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 we're hoping for a big W out there. All right. Hey, coming out of the bye, we'll see how it goes. Uh, Pez, thanks as always. We'll talk next week. Take it easy. All right, Jeff. Go Birds.